Hi friends, this video turned out to be a long one, so without wasting time, I will immediately get down to the business. Get to the point. A friend of mine brought me such a box and a dynamic hat and asked me to make an active subwoofer for the car. I must say right away that I'm not a subwoofer's fan in a car and also not even a car enthusiast, but I can hold a soldering iron in my hands. At first I decided to make a simple and cheap sub. The reason is that low frequency speaker itself, in this case it is 75 GDN, doesn't shine with great power. In general, I just thought to plug in a budget amplifier, filter, protection circuit, and that's all. Nevertheless, to unlock the full potential of this head, we need the amplifier of 50 to 70 watts. But with a 12 volt power supply for a head resistance of 4 ohms, such power cannot be obtained. Although no, it is possible. Only for this you need a class H amplifier with a voltage boost. For example, a microcircuit amplifier on the TDA1562. But nowadays, this microcircuit can't be found easily, and if you find it, either it will be a fake one or the cost will greatly upset you. These microcircuits haven't been produced for a long time, and the originals, even used ones, cost the same as a used factory-made car amplifier. This project is a complete car amplifier for a subwoofer, consisting of several parts, a voltage converter, an acoustic protection unit, an active low-pass filter, which is also an adder, and a power amplifier, in this case it is a class D. Everything is thorough here, a bunch of all kinds of protections, a rather powerful amplifier, and all this is mounted in a subwoofer box. Printed circuit boards for all blocks used in this project can be downloaded together with the general archive from the link in the description. There will also be Gerber files for ordering printed circuit boards at the factory of our sponsor GLCPCB. All you need to do is upload folders called Gerber to the company's website and select the options you need. Then you pay for the order and that's it. The factory can make boards of any complexity, size and number of layers. You can examine the appearance and check the board in a convenient viewer of Gerber files available on the website. The high quality and reasonable prices are guaranteed. The link to the GLC website can be found in the description under the video. Inverter or Voltage Converter this is a voltage converter made by push-pull topology. I think it is clear why we need an inverter. With an onboard voltage of 12 volts, it is impossible to obtain a pure sound power of more than 36 watts per load of 4 ohms, which is the resistance of standard acoustics. And even these 36 watts is ideal without taking into account the efficiency of the amplifier. Taking into account the efficiency in the case of class D amplifier, this will be at best about 30 watts, and in case of the AB class it will be 18 to 22 watts. This is clearly not enough for subwoofers, because the power of the LF amplifier directly depends on the supply voltage, has been used an inverter which makes an increased bipolar voltage from 12 volts. This is common way to supply most powerful amplifiers. The inverter is built on the CG3525 PWM controller and is equipped with a multifunctional production system, such as protection against under and over voltage of the input voltage, protection against reverse polarity, overheating protection. There is also a soft start to eliminate current surges. It is important to note that over and under voltage protection has the switch on hysteresis from half to one volt. I have set this useful trick on purpose, it will exclude false operation of protection when the supply voltage is unstable. The design capacity of the inverter is 150 watts, but you can get 200 without any problems. Moreover, there is no need to make any alterations, just wind up the corresponding transformer. The inverter doesn't have output voltage stabilization, since in my case it isn't necessary. The PWM controller is monitoring powerful MOSFETs, which pump the power pulse transformer. A bipolar rectifier is installed at the output of the transformer. The filtering capacitors on the board are small, because there are additional capacitors on the amplifier board itself. When developing a board and an inverter, I generally focused on compact dimensions without using an SMD. Moreover, the board is one-sided, so it's not a problem to repeat it at home. 
Pay attention to the jumpers on the board. These jumpers are power ones. They must have a diameter of at least one and a half millimeters. Reverse polarity protection is realized on a field effect transistor, which simply doesn't open if the polarity of the connection is reversed. The inverter is equipped with the remote function. In order to start the inverter and the entire complex as a whole, it is necessary to supply low current 12 volts to the ramp point. This option is found in any modern car amplifier. No need to turn off the main power supply from the battery every time. Instead, to start the system, a signal is sent to RAM, which can be generated by the car radio itself. The protections are built on the LM339 voltage comparator. They are fast and work out perfectly. When any of the protections is triggered, the corresponding LED lights up. To adjust the operation of the converter, that is, the PWM controller and subsequent parts, it's worth turning off the protection system in order to exclude its influence on the inverter circuit. To do this, just one of the pins of the specified resistor is soldered off. It's more work like a technological jumper. The operation principle of the protections is based on comparing the supply voltage with the reference voltage, which is formed by the CG3525 PWM chip. In the case of thermal protection, the reference voltage is compared with the voltage of a divider. One of the resistors of divider is an NTC thermistor. The specified trimming resistor makes it possible to adjust the temperature threshold of this protection. This inverter doesn't have short circuit protection, but I have developed a version with protection. The circuit isn't much different from the one given. All protection operation limits shown in the circuit are valid precisely when using the indicated resistors. I recommend using highly stable resistors in the divider circuits with a tolerance of 1% or less. In my case, many resistors are conventional with a 5% tolerance. Diodes in the output rectifier must be high-speed ones with a reverse voltage of at least 100 volts and a current of 8 amps. The board designed for diodes in the TO220 case. The power pulse transformer is wound on a toroidal core with a permeability of 2200. The manufacturer, alas, is unknown. The calculation of the transformer is carried out according to a specialized program. The winding data depends on your needs. It is important to note that the windings need phasing, that is, after winding, the beginning of one winding is connected to the end of the other. The beginning of winding on the circuit and on the board is indicated by a dot.